everyone, it's Mina Marzano at Medicare Insiders. Today we're gonna to be talking about non-resident appointments, so stay tuned for more. So if you're interested in selling Medicare products in another state that is not your resident state, there are a couple of things that you're gonna to wanna to consider before going down that road. So those are the things that we're gonna talk about in this video. Um, it's gonna involve licensing and appointments. The very first thing is going to be considering the fees involved in that licensure and the appointments. So in each state where you're gonna get licensed, you're gonna to have to pay to get that license as you did in your residence state. If you have an agency and you wanna get your agency license, you're looking at another additional fee on top of your individual agent license fee, you're going to be looking at that agency license fee. So that can add up really quickly. I always tell agents weigh out the costs of what you're gonna be spending in those licensing fees against what business you have available to write. If you know that you're going to be targeting this new state and writing a whole bunch of business in it, or at least that's your goal where you're gonna be targeting this other state with internet leads or mailers or any other kind of lead generation, then it might be worth it. Or maybe if you have several referrals in that state that can offset the cost that it takes to get licensed. But if you have absolutely no leads and you don't have any plans to work that market, then you might be spending a whole bunch of money out of pocket in fees for that licensing and not get your money's worth. In addition to the licensing, some carriers do also have non-resident appointment fees. So that's totally separate from the licensing fees that I'm talking about. These fees are straight from the carriers that some of you represent. So some care, some national carriers have those non-resident uh, appointment fees. Some carriers do have kind of a, a wave of those fees if you if you reach certain production goals. But for the most part, you are going to be required to pay that money. It'll be deducted from your commissions. And some of those non-resident appointment fees can, can really get hefty and they can start to add up if you're adding a whole bunch of states. So again, I would consider how much business you actually have to write in those states to see if it makes sense to pay all of those fees up front. If not, then what I always recommend is adding states as you go along. As you have business and opportunities that arise in each of those states, then you can add those non-resident appointments then. The second thing is make sure that you have the, the correct line of authority to sell Medicare. And here, one of the main states that I have this come up with is North Carolina. North Carolina, if you have a life and health or health insurance license, it is not sufficient for you to be able to market the Medicare Advantage products. You have to get a separate line of authority, which is for Medicare supplements and long-term care. A lot of agents don't know that and they try to write business in North Carolina and find out that they don't have that right line of authority. There's an extra step that you have to take in order to be able to sell Medicare in North Carolina. So depending on what state you want to get licensed in, I would definitely check with those state requirements to make sure that you are getting all of the correct requirements and the correct line of authority to be able to sell the products that you're wanting to sell in that state. And the last thing is if you are in a situation where maybe your client is moving out of your residence state or they're moving to another non-resident state where you're not licensed, I would check with that carrier, the carrier that they're currently on to see if they have any kind of agent protection program. There's a couple of carriers that will do this where if your client moves into another state where you're not licensed, if they change their plan with a telesales agent from that insurance company, then they will continue to pay renewals to you, uh, the original AOR, that you will maintain agent of record on that 
plan. That is not across the board and definitely check with the carriers uh, to make sure that that is something that you will qualify for, but it does happen in certain occasions where you might be able to retain that member and not necessarily have to get licensed in that state to continue to get your renewal. So that can also be an option if you're in a situation where you don't want to pay all of those uh, licensing fees and appointment fees, but you want to continue to get renewals on that client, that could be an option. So check with the carrier in question and see if that is an option for you. And that's really it for today's video. Simple, short, just wanted to throw some things out there for you guys to consider. Otherwise, like, comment, share, subscribe, go on Facebook and join our Facebook group, Medicare Insiders, and I'll see you guys next time.